good afternoon, Brian. <laughs> Good afternoon, So Hyun. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon. It sounds uh, really kind of uh, uh, refreshing. <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah, because most students doesn't like to reply. <laughs> Where did you live in the UK? No, I now I'm in Korea. Ah, so I, you you lived in the in India, right? In, yeah, I studied in India. So, okay, which city in India? Uh, it's a state called Tamil Nadu, mm. which is like nearby the Sri Lanka. Ah, okay. Mm. An area, so yeah, and the weather is maybe pretty different. Uh, yeah, but I was in some forest area, it was like Korea's autumn weather, uh -huh. like mostly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, you've been to Sri Lanka? No, <laughs> never. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. Why not? Pretty close from where you lived but i would like to travel more india so okay so which part of india was most impressive for you uh it was called the uh, city zai salmer zai salmer it was a desert area but uh -huh. the stars at the night oh stars at the night was really pretty so it was an impressive moment in my life Okay, okay. Well, frankly, I've never been to India, so I don't know much what we're already talking about, but uh, yeah, I think many young people have interest in going there in India. Yeah. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, uh, the second lecture for the midterm preparation. First of all, I, so Yo Gyeong Sim, do you have a Yo Gyeong Sim here? I need your email address right now. Please write down your email address on, uh, onto the chatting box right now, because I don't have your email address. Yo Gyeong Sim is there. This is urgent. <laughs> this is urgent. Um, okay, so why are waiting for her to write down her email address? So do you guys have any follow-up questions on the previous programs? From any follow-up questions? No? Uh, professor? Uh-huh. Uh, last class, I remembered we have some um, problems about the dividend in the, uh, maybe we have three calculation problems about the dividend in the uh, last PPT. And I was wondering, we can just use the Excel to figure it out. We can't use the formulas. We have to use the Excel, right? Uh, so you mean the dividend discount model? Uh, yes, we have several questions about the dividend, I remembered. Yeah, several questions uh, 
related to different discounting model. Okay. Yes. So then your question is, can say again? We have to use Excel to figure it out. We can't use the formulas. To, uh, what I mean is that we have to use the Excel, right? To figure it out. Um, yeah, basically, if you have a, uh, the calculator, then um, as far as you know the formula, I think you can get the answer. Um, but if you don't, if you don't have the financial calculator, then I think everybody has the Excel spreadsheet on their on your computers, right? So you guys need to use uh, Excel spreadsheet. But um, I'm not going to where there are only one or two uh, calculation problems. Mm. Yeah, two, one or two, uh, two, one or two calculation problems. So um, it's okay uh, when you have uh, when you take the exam. So if you if need if necessary, then you can use access spreadsheet to calculate uh, to get the to get the answers. Okay. Uh, hey. yeah, no problem. And professor. I want to check that what is the percentage of our midterm in our final score? We have 40%. I remember there was 30%. I, I, I don't really clear about this. Yeah. Um, actually, we are a little bit behind the schedule. Um, I don't know whether we can cover all the topics uh, by the end of this semester as I uh, planned. Uh, so the midterm exam takes the 50% uh, as the binar does. So yeah, the weight is the same as the binar, so 50 and 50. Um, and the binar, the capital budgeting and risk, re risk and returns and some currency related topics will be, yeah, domain, uh, some principles, main subjects. So yeah, 50 and 50. Mm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other? Hey, uh, Yeo Gyeong Shim is there? Yeo Gyeong Shim, did you? Uh, did you... Hey, Yeo Gyeong Shim. Yeo Gyeong Shim. Hey, Yeo Gyeong Shim. Professor, uh, we, we sent the email to you. So the email address is a Gmail or Sobridge email. Yeo Gyeong Shim. Sorry, could say it? She is junior. Uh, uh, we don't have a Yeogyeongshim right now here. What is the problem? Huh. Okay. Okay, today uh, the topics are also focused on, we focus on bonds and stocks. So first of all, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have you guys refresh the formulas related to the stock valuation. Um, okay. So I took out, uh, I took this from this textbook. Uh, so general case of stock valuation based on different discount model and the constant growth case and constant non-constant growth. And uh, 
this is the formula to get a recovery time. And uh, uh, using the comparables, using the uh, similar stuff, you can also take a uh, you can also uh, take evaluation make a uh, make evaluation of uh, the stuff you're interested in. Okay, so let's take a, a closer look at each formula. So general case is <clears throat> basically um, dividend discount model because the dividend is main cash flow of uh, from from star right so if you discount the dividends using the recovery return then you can value the stock right so once you have the value of the stock you're going to compare the value of the stock with the market price of the stock okay so if the market price of stock is uh, higher or lower than the value you got, then you make decision on whether you want to purchase or sell the stock, okay? So if the, uh, the value is uh, higher than the market price, then you are likely to purchase the stock, okay? So that's the whole purpose of um, making valuation of the stock. This is the uh, general, uh, the concept of evaluation of the stock. But as you know, as the company's earnings, as the company's earnings grow, right? So then the dividends will also grow as the company's earnings grow. So the growth rate of earnings will be reflected into the dividend amount, right? So the Growth rate. We need we need to uh, reflect. We need to uh, take account of, of growth rate into the evaluation. So, based on the dividend, if we assume that the growth rate is constant uh, uh, indefinitely, then we can take. Uh, we can take this formula, okay? This is based on the, um, the mathematical formula based on the number series, okay? So you don't have to think of uh, how to drive this formula from these number series, uh, but uh, simply you need to understand the, the dynamics of how recovery return and the growth rate and dividend have, uh, have impact on the value of the stock. So first of all, if dividend is higher, Okay, so then the value of the stock will increase. And if required return is higher, then value of the stock will decrease. Or if growth rate is getting higher, then the value of the stock will increase, right? From this formula. Okay, so you uh, basically understand how, uh, uh, how each of these uh, components in the formula uh, plays uh, in terms of the value of the star, okay? If you do not have any growth, if the dividend is just a constant uh, as some specific amount, then the value of star will be calculated using this formula, right? Because G is gonna be zero. Mm -hmm. Where in the, in the, some mature uh, dividend, uh, mature industry like uh, uh, utility companies or the uh, beverage companies, their growth rate is not. Yeah, in most in most cases very stagnant, so they don't grow a lot. So if they don't do not grow a lot, just the. Uh, uh, the growth rate is flat, then 
um, yeah, this formula will be useful in making the valuation of the star. So then constant growth is for some period, um, the growth rate will significantly high and then it reaches plateau, then the growth rate will be constant indefinitely. So while the growth rate is not uh, simply growing significantly, those periods should be separately discounted, okay? So non-constant growth is, for example, the, uh, period one, period two, this different amount is not based on the uh, growth rate, but uh, we, we sometimes call it a super growth, right? So during the super growth period, uh, we uh, discount uh, th those dividends at a discount uh, recovery return. And then once the different growth rate is constant, then we use, we apply this formula to get the value of the stock at the point when the growth rate is constant. And then we should or discount back those terminal value, right? Uh, the terminal value, I mean, the, when the growth rate is constant, uh, you can get the uh, value of the star using this uh, constant growth rate, growth, growth model, then uh, you should discount back to the present to get to add uh, to the present value of this the, uh, the dividends, super growth dividends. Okay. Um, You guys, can you guys, uh, uh, no. uh, this one and this one is basically uh, same thing, okay? Let's say R minus gross ray D zero plus one plus growth rate, right? This is gonna be D1. Okay, so during this period, if the dividend grows at constant rate, then you, you, use, you apply this formula to this period, right? Indefinite period. So then let's say year, year two, year one, year two, and you, you calculated the terminal value in year two, right? This is gonna be terminal value. So if you want to get the value of this stock, you discount this dividend amount, super gross dividend, and you discount this dividend amount, okay, using this required return, and you also discount this terminal value in year two, right? So like this, one plus R square. So then if you add a one, two, three, terminal value, then you're gonna have the, uh, the value of the star. Okay. Any question? No? No, Professor. Okay. Mm. Okay. And where um, this one is just uh, using this formula, right? You change you. Uh, change the position of the uh, components uh, to get the recovery return, right? So why do we 
why do we why do we need to get this recovery return? Where um, recovery return is basically an expected return from the investment. In this case, in a stock, right? Uh, but if if the required return is uh, is lower than other uh, investment, other return, other investment return, then you are not take uh, you are not it going to decide on you know, making investment in stock, right? Because the cost of uh, opportunity is uh, higher when the expected return from other investment is higher, right? So that's why we sometimes need to get the required return using uh, this formula, okay? Um, and valuation using comparables. This formula one, two, three, and four, they are foc they are focused on single star, right? One single star. One, two, four. If you have a one single star, one uh, if you have a one um, your star of interest, uh, then you are going to apply these formulas using, based on some information about dividends and uh, gross rate and uh, your ex uh, required return, expected return, you can value the uh, single stock you are of your interest. But another way to value of the stock of your interest is to compare the stock with some similar stock. Okay, so let's say you have uh, interest stock in stock A, um, but another way to value of stock A is to find some similar stock trading in the market. So that is going to be let's say B stock B is pretty similar in terms of industry and the business model, right? So then this stock B is gonna be benchmark. Let's say um, the Tesla, right? Tesla is the the leader in the electric vehicle, right? And you have some interest in some um, growing electric vehicle company, right? So using Tesla as a benchmark, you can get the price, you can get the value of the company A using the price to earnings ratio multiplied by earnings per share of this company. So price to earnings, you get, you get price earnings from the benchmark company, how? where simply you get the price in the market, from the market, and you're gonna have the earnings, right? You're gonna have earnings from this uh, company, Tesla, a benchmark company. And you're gonna use this earnings per share based on the expected, based on the forecast of the company A, right? So price to earnings, multiply by earnings per share. Let's say uh, your forecast is over the next five years. So earnings per share over the next five years, one to five years. Then the result, 
one to five years. This is your um, your forecast of the value of the star, right? So then you compare this value of the star with the current market value of stock A, right? So this is the one way, another way of varying star. If you have some comparable stock like uh, stock B, okay? So this is also very popular when it comes to valuing stock. Yeah, sometimes as you can as you can see here, some companies, let's say this company A is growing company. So usually growing companies do not uh, distribute dividends because they need to invest uh, all the earnings into their business at the early stage of uh, yeah, the development. So they don't pay dividends. And then this uh, comparable using the valuation using comparables is very useful when the company do not pay, does not pay dividends, okay? But not just in the case where the company do not, does not pay dividends, but also even, the, even if the company pay dividends, you can uh, simply use the comparables to make a valuation of the stock of your, of your interest. Any question? Okay. Now we are going to talk about bonds again. Um, I think you guys may have a chance to read this article. I hope you guys understand what this article is talking about, okay? Um, the reason is that if you guys understand that this article, then um, the interest rate, the term structure of interest rate, It's closely related to this article. Um, okay. The bond, the bond is all about interest, right? Because depending on how the market interest rate, what market interest rate is, the, value, the price of bond change it, right? So if inter inter market interest rate is higher, then the value of a uh, bond will fall, right? And vice versa. Uh, but the thing is that we have a short-term interest rate and mid-term and long-term interest rate, right? Right now, as you know, the central bank is very concerned about inflation, right? So to combat inflation, they keep raising interest rate, right? So the federal rate, for in case of US, federal rate, federal rate, base rate will be reflected into market interest rate, right? So then uh, this uh, federal rate will mostly reflect in the short-term rate because uh, right now we are facing inflation. So the most, uh, the, 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 the interest rate most affected by the federal increase and the the rising federal rate is short-term rate, right? Rather than long-term rate. Because 
we have uh, we should tackle the inflation. So short term rate will increase a lot as a result of uh, federal in, uh, rising federal rate. But once we have, uh, one, uh, but once the federal uh, bank uh, succeeded in running in inflation, which means that the market interest rate is quite high, right? Then when the interest rate is high, the economy is very likely suffer from the high interest rate. Investment will shrink and the demand will decrease, right? So the chance is that the economy may enter recession because of a high interest rate as a result of uh, a federal bank uh, increasing interest rate to combat inflation. So in the long-term rate, we, the investors expect that, oh, in the long-term, the interest rate is supposed to go down to stimulate economy, right? If interest rate goes down, then investment had, the company is gonna have lower cost of capital, which is going to lead to more investment. And uh, the consumers, may have a lower borrowing costs, right? So then they may consume more. So economy will be better than before when interest rate goes down. So when short-term rate is significantly high, then the investors expect long-term rate to decrease naturally because they think the government the central bank will be will now will be concerned about too much uh, will be concerned about too much high interest rate and uh, they 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 want to they want to um, stimulate the economy lowering interest rate so this that is the main ideas in this article. Okay? You guys understand what I just told you? The um, how the interest rate, long-term, short-term, and uh, central banks uh, monetary, we, we usually call it monetary policy when the central bank increase or decrease interest rate, okay? So monetary policy and uh, its reaction of the market, uh, the, the market reaction to the monetary policy. That is very important when it comes to fixed income valuation or investment. I mean, the bond investment. So at the end of the day, you guys need to have some, need to have that kind of perspective on the uh, fixed income market. Okay. Any questions? I have no questions, Professor. Do you follow me? Pluweb? Uh, yes, Professor. Could you repeat, please? Do you follow me? Yeah, of course, I'm here. Okay, great. Okay. 
Okay. So I want to stress that it is much more important to technically calculate uh, yield to maturity, present value, something like that. Um, I mean, I mean, the, the calculation of such uh, numbers uh, is kind of uh, pretty, pretty narrow, um, narrow-minded, uh, pretty narrow, uh, narrowly focused, uh, pretty narrowly focused. Um, what you what you guys really need to uh, get from this band band or its valuation is how to read uh, the the whole economy uh, based on the changes in the yield curve or interest rate curve. So as a result, how the demand and supply of bonds will play out in the market. Mm. This is the building blocks of yield to maturity. The yield to maturity is, as you know, is a return on the bond investment, right? So if you purchase a bond, as you purchase stock, you expect some return, right? That is the yield to maturity. Yield to maturity. Yield to maturity, as you know, you have the, the, the current price of bond and the, the cash flow coupon, right? Blah, blah, blah. And the principal amount. So if uh, this cash flow discounted at this yield maturity, then you're gonna have this price, this uh, current price. So yield maturity is the rate that makes the, the cash flow, future cash flows from the bond equal to the price of the bond, right? Then um, what consists of yield maturity? Well, first of all, risk-free rate of return and risk premium, okay? This is the uh, main building blocks of uh, yield maturity. So if we talk about if we talk about yield maturity of uh, government bonds, okay, treasury bonds, then there will be only this risk-free rate of return in the yield maturity because um, credit risk uh, liquidity liquidity is pretty high and very low credit risk and taxation risk. Uh, where not much different from other dip, other bonds, unless um, uh, you are talking about uh, tax exempt bond. So, uh, in case of a government bond, the yield maturity mainly composed of uh, risk free rate of return, and this risk free rate of return is consist of uh, can be. Uh, break down into expected inflation rate and uh, expected uh, real rate. So as you know, the central bank may increase, uh, could, uh, uh, they increase their, increase the uh, interest rate to tackle the inflation. So the increased uh, interest rate 
by the central bank reflects expected inflation. So risk-free rate of return includes expected inflation rate, okay? As well as expected real rate. And if you talk about corporate bond, right? Corporate bond has some additional yield, which is called the spread. Spread is the difference between benchmark government bond and uh, non-government bond yield. So as the spread is a uh, higher, higher, then yield maturity is getting higher, but which mean, then means that the risk of the bond is also getting higher, okay? So what kind of risk is are there in this spread? Taxation risk, liquidity risk, and credit risk. The credit risk is basically default risk. What if the company default the payment, interest payment, and the principal repayment? This is the biggest uh, risk. That is credit risk. Credit risk is usually you can measure the credit risk using the um, bond rating, right? And liquidity means that um, how you can easily sell or purchase the bonds at the at the price close to its intrinsic value is value is uh, is is intrinsic value without um, without without uh, without without getting discount to, due to a lack of uh, transactions. It's for example, where I like to sell uh, this, this bond, the corporate bond, but there's not much, there's not many people who has interest in this, in this bond, or there's not much market for this bond, okay? So then, even if the value of the bond is 100 because of the lack of uh, liquidity, you are, you are forced to discount the value of the bond, right? So the volume of transaction is directly related to liquidity, okay? The taxation is whether the bond, um, if you have any dividends and uh, uh, capital gains, whether those gain, uh, whether those uh, dividends are taxable, uh, the capital gains are taxable or non-taxable. So, so if the the dividends or capital gains is tax exempt, then the yield is going to be decreased. But if they they are taxable, then recovery return will increase to compensate, uh, compensate, make up for the, uh, the taxation risk. Any question? No. Um, I don't know, you guys are uh, following me. Okay. The relationship between bond price and the bond characteristics. These four characters are important, okay? I think we already covered these characteristics uh, in the previous questions, right? So please read these characteristics and uh, understand them. Okay, um, this will, yeah, this is, this, these are very important. Um, first of all, inverse impact, bond price and the discount rate, 
inverse relationship. And um, price change when market discount rate goes down is higher than market interest rate goes up. Convex defect. We're going to talk about convex this soon. And the same uh, time to maturity, lower coupon band has a higher, greater percentage price change than higher coupon band, higher coupon band. Okay. Why? Why? Because higher coupon bonds, cash flows comes earlier, right? Than lower coupon bond. So like, like this, um, like this one, short-term bonds has a lower risk than long-term bonds. Why? This, this two has, uh, has some similar similarity in terms of uh, in terms of interpretation, because uh, the higher coupon bonds means uh, kind of a short term cash flow, and the lower coupon bonds is long term cash flow, right? So long term bonds has a uh, great percentage price change compared to short-term bonds. Because as your, as your lender, it'd be much more happier to get the money back earlier rather than later, right? That's why. Okay, so you, guys know the difference uh, between the convexity and convex and the concave okay when when you see the graph uh, if you if the graph shows like this right then it is called convex yeah, it, it shows convexity, okay? This is a convex, convex curve. And the opposite is, opposite is the concave curve. Okay? If you, uh, do you need to um, uh, have the, the, uh, the, uh, the bow, image, image of a bow, so the bow, Bottom of bow looks like this, right? So this means convex. And if you make upside down, then this is concave. Okay. And um, the market, the relationship between discount rate or yield rate and the price shows in the bond market convexity like this. Okay. So this is the uh, actual relationship between market discount rate, market interest rate and uh, bond price. Not like this, but this. Okay. So this shows the convexity. But as you know, uh, when the one discount rate changes, 1% discount or 100 basis point changes, which one is higher? One and two. Which one is higher? If 1% one, 1 discount rate decreases, then Bond prices will increase, right? If a one percent uh, discount rate increases, then uh, bond price will decrease from previous one to decrease, right? Like this, D 
decrease and increase this many. Let's say 1%. 1%, right? This is changing, right? This is changing. This is changing. So this is change, this is change. So which one is higher? When 1% change is uh, lower, this one is lower and uh, uh, higher when uh, in terms of market in this country. So, um, Kyungjun, you are there? Song Kyungjun, you are there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So when market interest rate uh, decreased by 1% or increased by 1%, the price will change, right? If yes. this country rate is decreased uh, by 1%, 1 percent, then market rate, market price will from this point move to this point, right? Price will increase. Or interest market this country rate increases, then the price will move from here to here. Right. So then, which one, which one shows the, the higher uh, higher changes in terms of market price when one percent of this country rate changes? One or two? Is that the second one? Sorry, the second point. This one? Yes. yes. One. Okay, so let's say this is A and B, and this is a C and D. So my question is, when market interest rate is decreased by 1%, then the price, uh, price will move A to B, right? Yes. And if market interest rate increased by 1%, then price move from C to D. C to D. So then uh, my question is, uh, which one is, uh, so, um, so if you deduct, so, uh, so which one the changes, right? This change, which one is higher? One and two. So you are, you are saying two? Yeah, I think so. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, but here, for the same coupon rate and the uh, uh, times maturity, uh, percentage price change is greater value, meaning without regard to sign of change, when market discount rate goes down, then when it goes up, the convex effect. So as you can see, uh, because of the convexity effect, okay, the market interest rate decreases, the change in price is higher than the market interest rate is increasing, market interest rate increases. So then the answer is gonna be, it's going to be opposite. one, right? Because of this convex defect. Okay. You get it? Yes, I think I have to review it later. Okay. Hey, guys. So, uh, I don't know. Um, Is it too difficult?
to follow? I mean, this relationship between bond price and bond characters. What do you what do you think of this relationship? What do you think of this? What do you guys think of these uh, characteristics? Is it too difficult to figure out? Hmm? Myung-sub, what do you think? You are there? Yes, I'm here. What do you think of these characteristics? Is it too difficult to follow? Any questions? No, I'm trying to. No, sir. No. Sir, uh, sir, sir, uh, sir, 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 sir. So you are uh, totally understand, you totally understand what these characteristics are about, right? I will have to uh, repeat, but uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm a little bit concerned because of, about your silence. <laughs> okay. Okay, take, let's take on this question. Relationship between bond price and the bond characteristic. Uh, this is much more important than to simply calculate is or other numbers using calculator or Excel because uh, uh, this is the uh, kind of a core and the and and the, the uh, fixed investment, fixed bond, fixed income. Based on the relationship between bond price and the bond characteristics, which bond will go up in the price the most percentage basis, or if all is go down from five percentage to nine four point nine percent, which bond will go up in price the most? Okay, which one? Mm. Uh, Benedict, which one do you think uh, will go up in price the most? Benedict, you are there? Yes, I'm here. So which one do you think, I'm gonna give you some time. So which one do you think uh, will go up in price the most when ears go down from 5% to 4.9. Basically, ears, yeah, ears go down. So which one shows the highest changes in price? Take your time. We have the same yield maturity, so don't have the concern. And uh, time to maturity different, right? So coupon rate, time to maturity, time to maturity. So if you remember coupon effect and maturity effect. So these are the key to solving this question, the problem. Coupon rate, maturity, coupon effect, maturity effect. So when it comes to coupon effect, coupon rate, higher coupon rate shows the, shows the, or lower coupon, so which one, the higher coupon rate, lower coupon rate, which one shows the highest change in price? Benedict, higher coupon rate, or lower coupon rate? The lower. 
here. Yeah, the lower tier, the lower coupon has a greater percent change in price, right? So we need to take A and D, right? How about maturity? Longer maturity, shorter maturity, which one shows the highest changes in price? Longer. Yeah, longer. So then the answer is D, right? Yes. So then, um, it was okay. And uh, how about Tan, Tantra? You are there, Tantra, you are there? Tantra, no? Um, Kaeun, you are there? Kaeun, you are there? No. Uh, Gujet, Gujet Jen, Gujet, Gujet, Gujet Jen, Gujet Jen. Gujet, you are there? Gujet? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so what about the second one? Which bond will go down in price the least when it is go up by 0.1%? Which shows the least changes in price when it is go up from Five to five point one percent. Least. So it's the same characteristic. So applied here. So coupon effect. So higher coupon, lower coupon. Which one shows the shows the lowest? Uh, changes in price when it changes. Higher coupon, lower coupon. Good job. Higher coupon. Yeah, higher. Uh, higher. Yeah, so then C, right? And F is uh, most uh, possible candidates. How about maturity? Longo or shorter, which one shows the uh, lowest chain in price when it is the chain? Shorter. Shorter. So then uh, we need to only need to compare C and F in maturity, right? So then C has a shorter maturity. So then answer is C. Okay. You guys clear? Good job. Are you clear now? Yeah, yes. Okay. Mm. So please try to understand these characteristics between bond price and uh, uh, and the bond price and um, the factors of uh, bond, such as coupon, maturity, okay? And the convexity. I took out this question from the textbook because I found this question a little bit interesting. Um, This is the original question, but I'm not, I'm gonna change, uh, what if I'm gonna change uh, this question like this. What is the yield to maturity of this bond?
So you've just found a 10% coupon bond on the market that says for par value. Okay. Then what is the yield to maturity of this bond? This question, what is the maturity of this bond needs some calculation. Uh, but this question does not require any calculation. <laughs> okay. So what is the yield maturity of this bond when the bond has 10% coupon rate and says a par value? Yana, you are there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I do. So great because I have problems with my microphone. So, uh, uh, yield maturity he is ten percent. Ten percent. Correct. Yeah, yield maturity is ten percent. Right, because it is their par value. So then, as you know, yield maturity is the rate that makes the of the value of uh, the, the the value of the cash flow future cash flows same as uh, the price of the bond so yeah when the coupon rate is 10% if a market interest rate is the same as the coupon rate then the bond is going to sell par value good job great and then this question, the what is the maturity of this bond? Where well, you we we know the coupon rate and uh, the maturity, right? And we also know the price of this bond. This is just only one uh, missing item. So then, using the financial calculator or the Excel, you can get uh, this maturity. Okay, not that difficult. Which formula in Excel should we use to get the Sorry? Which formula in Excel should we use to get the period time? We sorry, could you say again? One second. Okay, now it should be better. Uh, my question was, uh, which formula in Excel should we use to get the maturity, the period? Ah, uh, maturity. Maturity is uh, basically N, right? So maturity is gonna be, uh, so um, you need to, uh, Get the um, payment, not payment. Hmm. I need, I need to uh, look in. I need to look into the Excel spreadsheet to find uh, the correct uh, formula. Okay, so I will get back to you after this class. Uh, looking into after looking uh, looking into the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Excel. I didn't ask our discussion for myself, so I will do. Um, <clears throat> the term structure of interest rates. This one is also uh, pretty important. Term structure of interest rate. As you can see, um, this, this is time to mature, right? So we are supposed to have different time to maturity. Right? Five year, 10, 15, 20, something like that, right? 
or oh, maybe it, maybe one, two, three, four, five. And actually, not like this. Uh, um, we usually have the terms like uh, one, five, one, five. Uh, um, 10, 20, uh, 25, something like that, right? So um, the term structure of interest rate means uh, uh, the relationship between number and stress rate on default free discount security and time temperature. So simply speaking, the term structure of interest rate is uh, what is the Interest, interest rate for each time to maturity. For in case, in case of if time to maturity is one year, what's the interest rate? This one. If time to maturity is five, what's the interest rate? This one. Right? X, Y, right? What if the time to, uh, time to, mat time to maturity is 10 year, what's the interest rate? So like this. So this is a spot rate. This, uh, the term structure interest rate changes every day, right? So think about, um, think about the bond price, valuation bond. You know, uh, let's say two year, uh, three-year coupon, okay? Principal, one plus R, one plus R, one plus R. So basically, uh, this is EO, this is this uh, discount rate because we, going, we are going to have a cash flow in one year, right? We are supposed to discount this cash flow in one year using the recovery return discount rate, discount rate, discount rate for, discount rate for the uh, one year time to maturity, right? One year time, one year time, one year time to maturity, uh, recovery return from one year time to maturity, this one. And Second year, sec the, the cash flow in second year, we supposed to discount uh, this cash flow in second year using the recovery return. I mean, this interest rate in second year. In case of, let's say we have a second year and discount rate like this, okay? So every year there is a different interest rate for the specific year. As we can see in this time, uh, the term structure of interest rate. Term structure means, term structure means, uh, th this is a term, right? And the interest rate, this one. So the, uh, based on the, these terms, time to maturity, interest rate shows like this, all shows like this all shows like, maybe shows like this, okay? So we are supposed to discount um, future cash flows at that specific period. Then we are gonna have uh, this price, current price of the bond. But, you know, it to maturity, right? It to maturity simply uh, disregarded the, um, interest rate for each year, but you just find out the interest rate that makes uh, the present value of cash flows, the sum of the, uh, sum of the present value of cash flows, same as uh, the 
current price of the bond. So yield maturity actually does not exist in the in uh, 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 does not exist in in this term structure of interest, but it's just the uh, the rate you get from the calculation using the financial calculator or the Excel. You know what I mean? So yield maturity is kind of an average rate over the some period, which makes the present value of cash flows same as uh, the current price of the bond. So if you discount future cash flows using this yield to maturity, then you're gonna have the current price of the bond. The yield maturity could be higher or lower than the each interest rate or interest rate over each period. But on average, yield maturity is the rate that makes the present value of the cash flow the same as uh, the price of the bond. Okay, so you guys may have uh, some better perspective of, of what yield maturity is about. Anyway, um, this term structure of interest rate have three types, uh, has shows three types. One is upward sloping term structure. Upward slope term structure means that as the term yield to maturity is getting longer, the interest rate is getting higher. Okay. This is the upward sloping term structure. When the economy has this upward sloping term structure, is is pretty normal because as uh, the economy is growing and uh, inflation also is getting increased as the economy grows. So it is quite normal to have upward sloping term structure when the economy is good. But we, also have sometimes a downward sloping term structure, or it is called inverted uh, term structure of interest rate. The longer term maturity has a lower interest rate than shorter term, shorter time to maturity. This means that in the future, interest rate will go down. When the economy has this inverted uh, term structure, it, sign, it indicates that the economy in the future, in the long run, is going to, is going to deteriorate. The economy's activities will slow down. Why? Because in the future, the, the reason they expect the lower interest rate in the future, <laughs> if they expect the low interest rate in the future, they think that the, in the future, the economy is not very good. So the central bank is reduced interest rate to boost the economy, okay? That's the meaning behind this lower interest rate in the future, in the longer maturity, okay? So downward sloping term structure is has some kind of a gloomy picture of the economy, okay? So 
based on the understanding, you may be able to read uh, these graphs. The difference between long-term rates and the short-term rates. Um, when the long-term rate is a higher than short-term rate, that is the normal term structure of interest, right? That's good. But longer term is longer term uh, rate is lower and short term is higher then that is not very good for the economy so if you see nineteen yeah. This time and this time. As, it, as, it, as I said, this term structure shows that. Uh, this term structure shows that where uh, in the future, the economy is growing, right? This term structure shows that in the future, the economy will slow down, okay? That is the um, normal interpretation of this term structure. But here um, you can see very, very low short-term interest rate. And around the 2000, early 2000, I think this is around 2008. And this is during the period of Great Depression, 30s and 40s. This is Great Depression in the US, Great Depression. And 2008, the financial crisis. So from this graph, you can see, oh, short-term rate is pretty lower than the uh, longer term rate. So the if you draw the uh, graph, it may look like this. Maybe look like this, right? Pretty steep, very steep. When a short-term rate is pretty low and the longer term is uh, high, when the um, slope is pretty slow, uh, the slope is pretty steep, it means that the, right now the economy is really in a bad shape. So to boost the economy, the bank uh, lowers the interest rate, very lowers interest rate to the extreme, right? So because we, uh, at the time in 30s and 40s, uh, because of the Great Depression, the central bank uh, decreased interest rate very, very short-term rate, they, they decreased the short-term rate, okay? After increasing the short-term rate, they decreased the short-term rate. Initially, they uh, increased, but later they decreased the short-term rate significantly to boost the economy. And during the financial crisis, after increase, uh, after increase the short-term rate, they significantly decreased the uh, short-term rate to boost the economy. And then, when the economy is heating up, they increase short-term rate again, right? So you can, from this graph, you can see um, from the, 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 the changes in short-term rates, uh, especially short-term rates. Short-term rate, it shows the, the economic health, current status of economic health. So from this uh, graph, you can see 
what may happen during the time. I don't think we have time for uh, this uh, color bond, the put bonds, the floating rate bonds, but I think if you read this slide, you guys may be able to understand what color bonds, put bonds, and floating rate bonds, okay? Just try to read this slide. And um, I think you can, you guys can solve these questions, okay? So I'm gonna give you additional slides for this question. and this question, okay? So we have three minutes. So any questions? I tried to make you guys understood better by speaking very, very slowly, but I'm not sure you guys uh, uh, well followed me. So any questions? Uh, professor? Uh-huh. Uh how can we see our problems for the midterm? Will you share through the Zoom or we can see it on the LMS? I'm gonna send you the exam uh, file uh, to your uh, the Solbridge email address, okay? Okay, thank you. So you already see it individually. And I also checked our syllabus. Uh, our syllabus said that we will have two midterm exams. So how many midterm exams will we have? Originally, you are supposed to have a two midterm exams, but uh, you, because of UCL, UCLZ, uh, so we, are, oh. yeah, we are going to have, this is the, uh, the only midterm exam. And then we are going to have a final exam. Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay. Any other? I'm sorry, Professor. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I didn't get uh, currently the information uh, with last question of other student. Uh, we will have uh, questions in LMS system uh, during the exam, or it will be uh, the further file. Uh, sorry, I, I did not catch your question. Sorry, Chris, again. We will have uh, midterm exams uh, questions, or we will have a uh, PDF file, for example. Yeah, I'm gonna send you uh, the, P uh, the PPT file, which contains the exam questions to, you, uh, to your email address individually, okay? So you're going to receive uh, uh, my email uh, this Thursday around uh, 1 15, 59 p.m. Just one minute to 2 p.m. Okay. Then you're going to have uh, one and a half hours to take on the exam. Then you should send back the bar with the exam in PDF or I prefer PDF file or uh, PPT yeah, before 4 p.m. One second, okay. what time you, will you send us the email with the uh, tasks? By 2 or by 2.30? Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, I, 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 I got confused, yeah. Uh, 229, okay. By 229, you're going to receive uh, my my email, uh, which has uh, EGM questions. Sorry. To, so you're going to have uh, uh, exam from 2.30 to 4 p.m., okay? You should submit the uh, answer, uh, the, the, the file with answers by uh, 4 p.m., okay, sorry. Professor, so mm -hmm. we do not have to connect to the Zoom, right? 
no, I'm not going to supervise you guys taking exam. I believe in you guys. Uh, but I don't think you guys, you guys, even if you guys rather try to cheat, I don't think you guys have enough time to cheat. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's up, on, it's up to you. It, uh, so, so I, I think there is an anti-cheating campaign going around at the school. So let, let's follow that campaign. Anyway, any other okay, questions? Thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, uh, Liu Chen, Liu Chun. Hey, question? Me llamo. Uh, no question, Professor. Okay. okay, so uh, for the uh, student who has next class, so good luck with you guys for the uh, midterm exam. So see you next Tuesday. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Professor. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye bye.